there as well. So we are going to go ahead and, and jump right into this, everybody. JT, we got your screen up. Um, guys, we will uh, we'll try to again do some Q&A after JT, if, or if either of you guys want to you know, look at that chat box for the Q&A and answer in the session, great. But otherwise, we'll try to try to address some some questions at the end. Really quick here, before we get started, just want to say another another thank you to the Marine Corps uh, for helping us do this and to, to growing leaders and JT and, and David couldn't do this without you guys. Our next session, the primary colors of a leader is what we're going to jump into here in this session. Uh, growing leaders, athletic consultant and VP JT Toms. We got here teams up with former New York Giants Super Bowl champion and New York Giants Director of Player Engagement, David Tyree, to unpack the four habits and attitudes every student-athlete needs to develop in order to succeed on and off the field. Uh, everyone, again, you have that Q&A box here. I'll keep, I'll keep monitoring that. Uh, this next session will go about an hour. JT, David, thank you guys so, so much for, for being a part of this. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, guys. And, and thanks to everyone who, who's hopping on really quick. I'm, I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. David, I think you're up in New York, right? Jersey, born and raised, we're still here. Yeah, I see y'all notice he's got his Syracuse uh, shirt on. He's, he's, he's holding strong to the old alma mater there. Um, <laughs> well, guys, we're, we're super pumped to talk to you today. We're going to talk about those primary colors of a leader. I know some of you had questions about, oh, well, what, is, what are those? How does that work? But we're going to unpack that today so that you can have uh, just a handle on how to, to best add value, how to earn respect from others. But before I dive in and David and I start talking, I want to give you just a quick background of growing leaders uh, who David and I have, have had the opportunity to serve with. Um, and uh, Growing Leaders, just so you're aware, is a nonprofit organization, and uh, we exist to empower the emerging generation with skills to lead in real life. So we've had the opportunity to help thousands of coaches, teams, athletic departments uh, connect, engage, and develop their athletes into resilient, self-aware, emotionally intelligent men and women who solve problems that serve people. So, in fact, David, you and I met uh, first when when uh, we came up to the New York Giants and, and started working with you guys on how to develop your players. So, um, and, and I think that's the first time we met, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was, JT. You know, um, you know, obviously, I was introduced to growing leaders through some relationships at the NFL, and I just I just found it to be incredibly incredibly relevant. And uh, not too long after, I was able to take the position with New York NYG, and I knew it was something that I wanted to uh, dig deeper into, which has been invaluable. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to dive in here today, but I just want to give you some quick context as to who Growing Leaders is, because most of you probably haven't heard of us. We're, we're not a household name. But, um, you know, I want to start off with, with a question. I want you to think about this. Uh, really, when did you first realize COVID-19 was going to be a big deal. Like, think about that to yourself. I know for me, I remember, David, I remember exactly where I was, right? I was sitting on my couch. I was reading a book and my phone went off, right? My phone went off and said that the Utah Jazz game had been canceled and then the NBA was postponing the season. And I thought, oh my goodness, what just happened? I mean, I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. I had never thought in my wildest imagination that we live in a day where professional sports in March madness <laughs> would get canceled. I mean, David, do you remember where you were? Yeah, I was actually same same timing. Uh, you know, we were actually in Las Vegas for annual meetings for player engagement. So it was, uh, you know, it was the last trip I had, obviously business wise. And once the NBA made that that announcement, and you know, and I'm like I said, I'm a I'm, I'm far from the, um, you know, and everybody has a different approach to, to this, but I'm far from a German fool, but, you know, I do follow instructions well. So, you know, <laughs> so, but when I saw the cancer disease and I said, oh, buddy, uh, let's prepare for what's going on uh, when we get home because this is, this is something we've never seen before. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's definitely been a, a change. I'd say, you know, the athletic world – has been turned upside down as we know it. And uh, I think there was a meme that came out uh, that I just feel like explains kind of the situation that we're all in around the world together. It says, we're all in the same boat, but we're in different storms, right? We're all in the same boat and we're in different storms. So if you're joining us on the webinar today, I imagine we're all in the same boat, right? We're not competing. Uh, we don't have our fellow teammates to push us, to drive us. Um, you're really having to focus on more of a, 
of an internal locus of control rather than an external locus of control, which is you're having to do, be self-motivated, right? Um, but even though we're all in the same boat, I just want to go ahead and recognize right now, we're probably all in different storms. And I don't know what storm you're going through personally. Um, you know, you might just be in a sprinkle, right? Where you've had some life change, right? That's where I'm at, right? I, I, I'll admit I personally don't know anyone who's been infected. I'm speaking to you from my house right now. I still have a job. I am so grateful for the blessings my family uh, has right now. We've had life change, but you know, I'm, I have a lot to be grateful for. Some of you joining us today are in a downpour, right? Maybe your parents lost their job. Uh, maybe your coach lost the job, right? Maybe you lost a job or something happened that you just really struggled and you're trying to fight through this. Uh, some of you are in a hurricane. You're on a boat and you're in a hurricane. You've lost loved ones. Uh, you still have friends who are infected. Um, I've got a friend who works at the NFL and he was telling me 18 of his friends are infected with COVID-19 and he's already lost a couple. I mean, that's just, I can't fathom that, right? So wherever you are right now, as you're hopping onto this webinar, I first just want to let you know, um, we care about you and we're going to get through this. And I don't know what your storm looks like, but know that we're in the boat with you and we're, and we're caring for you. And I want to remind you too, really quick, um, that the most powerful waves emerge from the strongest storms. The most powerful waves emerge from the strongest storms. No matter how hard this storm is, you can use this as an opportunity to grow yourself, to, to get mentally strong, to, to find a way to say, I'm going to come out of this and I'm going to flourish, not flounder. So today, David and I, as we kind of talk a little bit, we want to pro provide you a little bit more clarity, a little bit more direction, and also some hope uh, as you're navigating the storm. And we're going to do that by talking about the primary colors of a leader. Now, David, you know me. I like to, I like to do competition. So I figured we'd start off with a little game for everybody watching. Does that sound good to you, David? I'm loving it. Let's get it. All right. So here's, I'm going to put on some music for dramatic effect. Here we go. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys can hear some of this music here. We're going to do a game. Now, here's how the game works. I'm going to ask you a question, everyone out there, and David, you, you can answer too, all right? But I'm going to ask you an A or B answer. Whatever you think the answer is, you'll just type it in to the chat feature, and I want to see how many people get these questions right. Now, we're talking about primary colors, as Major Morales said. That's, that's a little bit more in the art world. And uh, I want to know what you guys know about art really quick. So are you ready to compete, David? Are you ready for this? I'm all about compete. I hope I all right, here we go. <laughs> Question number one. This person invented the scissors. Is it Thomas Edison or is it Leonardo da Vinci? Now, David, everybody else is going to type in their answers right now, but you, my friend, you're gonna to have to answer live, and that way everybody knows whether you get it right or wrong. What do you What do you think the answer is? I'm going. I just gotta go. Hey, Thomas Edison. You going? Tom says is that your final answer. It's my final answer. I don't know much about Da Vinci. All right. Let's see if uh, you guys playing can beat David. The answer is Leonardo stuff. Da Vinci. All right. So you wouldn't guess it. I mean, Thomas did. He did invent a lot of stuff, David. I'll admit it. You know he. Came up with a lot of inventions. All right, so you're down one. Anybody else who got that right, you're beating David Tyree right now, okay? Rough start. Okay. All right, yeah. next question. Here we go. Vincent Van Gogh is most famously known for which painting? Is it Starry Night, or is it this one that's in the Sistine Chapel, The Creation of Adam? David, what's your answer? Well, on A, Starry Night. Starry Night. Are, are you Starry sure about that? I feel good. All right. Final answer. And the, and the answer is, you got it right. Well done. All right, David. You got okay. a point on the board here. Point on the board. All right. If you got that right as well, you're still beating David. If you got it wrong, you're tied with him. If you've gotten too wrong, you might as well just quit playing. You're hopeless <laughs> anyway. So, uh, all right. Here we go. Let's go to the next question. Ooh. All right. This painting was created by, was it? Leonardo da Vinci or Pablo Picasso? I don't, you know, I don't know much about art, but Pablo usually, you know, he's on that, um, just that abstract painting. This doesn't look abstract, so I'm just going to, 
I'm going to be back in the guessing lane, but I'm going Da Vinci. You're going Da Vinci. I love your thought process right now, right? You, yeah, you are right. right. Pablo is really known for for those wild uh, out there type of paintings. Uh, I the answer I is a lot of bees coming up, though. I'm, I'm, you know, can I phone a friend? <laughs> no, can't phone a friend, man. You just got it wrong. All right, guys, you are. Be if if you've gotten all right so far, you're beating David Tyree. Uh, let's go to the next question. This is our final question. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. You got a chance to go 500 with this if you get this right, David. Oh, this artist is famous for creating the most beautiful shade of gray. Was it Rembrandt or Claude Monet? This sucks, man. This should have went sports. I'm going to go the most beautiful. I have no idea who Rembrandt is. I thought Rembrandt was a painting, so I'm just going to go Rembrandt. Going Rembrandt? All right, the answer is Claude no yeah, name. All right, so David, you went one for four today. You betted one for four. You know, that's two fifty. Maybe a major league team would keep you know pick you up if you betted two fifty, but maybe not long, right? Yeah, I need to go. But uh, hey, we've established that we as athletes, we probably don't know a lot about art, right? <laughs> not this athlete. <laughs> yeah, <these guys> <laughs> well, thanks for playing, David. Guys, thank y'all for playing too. Um, you know, I, I'm going to kick this off as we dive into primary colors. So my wife, David, is a huge art person. I mean, she, uh, she actually uh, started to major in it in college. She paints all the time, and I just love it. And so we went to Paris together, and I took her to a place called the Louvre. I'm sure you're familiar, right? It's a very famous um, museum. Oh, yeah. And while we were at the Louvre, we started walking around, looking at all the different art and everything, and there was this one piece and I just remember it was just, I mean, probably 200 people huddled around this piece, right? I'm going to put it on the screen, maybe you recognize it, right? This is, this is the Mona Lisa, right? Everyone had their pictures, you know, their phones out, they're taking pictures of a picture. And me as an athlete, you know, I, I love art because my wife does, right? And I love my wife, but I didn't quite understand what was going on. And so I, I asked my wife, I'm like, you know, like, why are they taking a picture of this, right? Like, you can just buy a copy of this thing for 50 cents in a postcard, right? Well, then I learned that this original piece is worth an estimated $850 million. Um, and I mean, that's almost a billion, right? So Oof. I just I was blown away. And, and my wife started explaining to me, you know, do you see that piece, JT? Like, that started with the artist, you know, who, who painted that, they, they only had the primary colors. And it started with just red, blue, yellow, and then they had white on there, which isn't a primary color, but it helps you blend. And just from those four primary colors, they, were, they finished with this. And I thought, well, 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 that is kind of incredible, right? And uh, as I looked at this, I started thinking to myself, you know, it kind of reminds me of leadership. You know, as leaders, if you think about it, I don't know if you've ever met somebody who tries to be like somebody else, right? They try to be a copy of somebody else that they see. And you're kind of like, oh, it's like disgenuine, right? I, there's something that comes across the wrong way. Um, you know, just like with the Mona Lisa, you buy a copy of it, you can get it for 50 cents on a postcard. But, you know, the original piece is worth $850 million. Great leaders, right? Every single leader you know, they're going to look different. They're all going to be different colors, different pictures, but the best leaders are original. They're themselves, 100% true themselves. I mean, have you recognized that too, David? Would you agree with that? No, I couldn't agree more. I think that's, um, you know, something that even though you know, there's a lot of principles that, you know, people know and uphold to be, to, to be, uh, to be right, but to, to really live authentically takes some, some bravery. I, I know we're going to explore that today. So uh, authentic leadership couldn't be more impactful. Yeah. Well, today we really want to talk to you guys all about painting your own masterpiece as a leader, right? We're not going to tell you the, the do's and don'ts. We don't want you to be a carbon copy of what we're trying to tell you. We want to give you the foundational principles today that you can learn in time through experience how to blend so that you can paint your own masterpiece as a leader right? And, and that's why we are calling this the primary colors of a leader. Now, when you think about those primary colors, right, you've got that blue, the yellow, and the red, and then every artist usually has a white palette as well so that they can blend all the colors. And the first uh, color that we're going to be talking about today is, these are going to be the four principles that we unpack, 
is, is the color blue, which, which stands for character. The foundational ingredient to leadership is character. And the summary is quite simple, right? Character enables you as the leader to do what's right, even when it's difficult. We've heard this since we were in kindergarten, right? Everyone knows this, but it's like Major Morales said, there's a difference between knowing and talking about something and doing it, right? So many of us as, as leaders, we, we start to get scared or nervous or fearful and we, and we don't do what's right when it's difficult because we don't have the character. So to help us dive into this concept, this principle a little bit more, I want to share with you um, a habitude. Now, habitudes are uh, images that form leadership habit and attitudes. It's an it's a elite performance tool that we use at Growing Leaders uh, to help the nation's most elite teams and athletes in the NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, Olympic, uh, Olympic athletes, and more, right? So I want to share some of these habitudes with you so you can understand how to apply these primary colors. Now to start off, um, David, I'm going to tell him a little bit of the story and then you and I can interview here at the end. But uh, to start off, I don't know if you guys recognize this picture uh, right here. This, this is a picture of the Titanic. Many of you have probably heard of the Titanic, maybe because you watched the Leonardo DiCaprio movie or because you heard about it in a history class. But what's so fascinating about the Titanic is it was a boat, supposedly, that could not be sunk. Well, this picture begs to differ, right? If that, that picture is the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean. Now, here's what's fascinating. The Titanic was the most elite ship that had ever been built, and it had the most talented crew, right? You don't put a, you know, an average crew with the best vessel. You find the best captain, the best crew, and you just stack the team when you've got a great boat like this. So why did the Titanic sink? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, it wasn't for the lack of warnings. In fact, there were several warnings from other ships to the Titanic that there were icebergs in the area. But the crew of the Titanic had an agenda in mind. They had this great vessel and they wanted to, they, they got a little prideful and they wanted to get across that great pond faster than anybody had ever really done it before. And instead of paying attention to the warnings, the last telegraph that was sent from the Titanic's crew to all of those other ships warning them about the icebergs in the area was this. Check it out. After being warned 30 minutes before they, they sunk, they, they received a telegraph of a warning and they responded by saying, shut up, I'm busy. Shut up, I'm busy. That's not a talent issue. They were ignoring the warning signs. They thought that they knew better and they didn't need to care about what anybody else said. Have you ever felt like that before? I don't know about you, but I've felt that way. I've ignored others when they're trying to warn me. Well, that's what the Titanic did. And because of that, not, not a talent issue, but a judgment call. They, they, they ended up sinking that ship, hitting an iceberg and costing many people their lives. So the image that I want to talk to you, the habitude I want to talk to you about is, is, we call it the iceberg. And it's really simple because it reminds us of this valuable leadership principle. And here's what it is, quite simply. You see that iceberg, it represents your leadership. The 10% above the water, that's your skill. The 90% below the water, that's what sliced the Titanic in seven different places that caused it to sink. You see, that represents your character. It's what's below the surface that can sink your ship. But it's also what's below the surface that can support the tip. You see, many athletes all around don't struggle to make it to the next level or don't struggle as a leader because they, ha they don't have the talent. In fact, many of them have the talent. You can probably think of a lot of people who were super talented, but because their lack of character, they weren't able to pursue their dreams, right? So what I'd like to do, David and I want to talk to you about is, is how can you focus on making sure you don't sink your boat, right? How can we make, make sure that you know how to, you develop a strong sense of character so you can grow no matter what your friends think about you? Major Morales said it. It's not about being liked. Leadership is not about being liked, right? It's about attacking the mission and going after the mission. So, 
that can be really hard. So I want to give you four ingredients of character that you can start working on to grow, right? This is what people do not see. People aren't going to see you working on this. They're not going to know. The first thing is your personal identity. Where do you get your identity from? If it's from a sport, I've got bad news from you. You're eventually going to stop playing that sport, right? Mm -hmm. Um, look at what we're doing right now with COVID-19. I mean, we're all away from our sport, right? And probably a lot of us are struggling right now because this is what we got our affirmation from. It's where we got our identity. The other thing we really need to focus on to develop your character and so that you are an unshakable, unshakable leader is your core values, right? What convicts you? What do you care about? What are the things you really want to stand for in life? In other words, thinking about the future, when you pass away, which I know that's a crazy thing to think about, but when you're gone from this world, what do you want people to say about you? Do they just want to say, oh yeah, they were a competitor? Or do you want them to say more? Talk, I know for me, I want people to talk about, uh, about how much I love my family, how much I love my kids, how I believed in others. And I'm going to be real with you. That's really hard to do sometimes, but it's part of my core values and it helps me make every decision. Next, we need to talk about emotional security. Where are you getting your security from emotionally? You've got to discover a way to, to find that internal security that you're okay with who you are, no matter what other people say and be able to stand firm on that. And then lastly, it's self-discipline, right? The only way to get from where you are to where you want to go is on a lonely path called discipline, right? These are the four core ingredients to help you develop character in your life. Um, you know, David, I'd love for, to pause really quick. I'd love to hear your comments on this. I mean, what, what is your perspective on this for you, sir? And you're on mute right now, so you'll need to unmute yourself first. There we go. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, you know, guys, I, I couldn't, this is the foundation of it all. And I, I don't think this is a, a conversation that happens often, but not given as much attention as it needs to. Obviously, everybody understands that word foundation is very much relative to building a house and the strength of a house. But your life is your, your life is your, is your home. And I've been deeply impacted by this as a, as a, you know, as a, as a young teenager growing up, and we all have these character flaws. Um, we all have, there's going to be some, some areas where we're more refined and areas where we're less refined. But if we're not intentional about attacking, and even more so, I love the, the four different areas that we're able to, to separate that, that really um, begin to identify what's, what, what are the things that people can't see that really make us who we are. And, you know, and I think we have to really deep, deep, you know, be intentional about um, working toward and attacking these particular areas. Everybody likes to be celebrated. Everybody likes to do. Not, a not enough attention often is given time to who am I? Um, what, you know, what do I believe? What do I stand for? So, you know, it's, it's not, it's not um, a popular thing, especially the younger that we are. But ultimately, if you're going to be responsible, if you're going to be trustworthy, if you're going to ascend to the ranks of, 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 of a place where, there's some measure of significance being able to impact people's lives. You're going to need this. Yeah. Thank you, David. And, and, you know, when I think about this idea of character and what's beneath the surface, let me go back to this really quick, right? You know, I've had, I've seen questions come in, like, how do you develop influence? How do you get people to follow you? Well, first of all, I just want to go ahead and say to us at Growing Leaders, leadership is simply influence. It's leadership is not being the captain of the team. It's not being the head coach. It's not being the most popular. Every single one of you, when you walk into the room, whether you're the most liked person or the least liked, you have an influence. And it's about how you use that influence that's going to make you a great leader. And if you want to know how to earn respect with others and how to, how to get them to follow you and how to be the leader, it's focusing yourself on these things. Focusing on where does your personal identity come from, defining that. What are your core values? Being emotionally secure and, and developing self-discipline. You actually don't even have to speak at this stage of leadership development. In fact, it's better if you don't speak. And show everyone you mean what you care about, right? So here's what's going to happen if you develop character in your life, right? 
Number one, it's going to communicate credible credibility to everyone around you. When they see you living out the things that convict you, whether they agree with them or not, they will respect you, right? And then you're going to be able to harness respect with others. Um, there's always that player on the team, right, who's really not that talented, but they just work their butt off, right? And they just work so hard that you can't help but respect them, even though they're not that good, because their work ethic is just so high, right? I think of Rudy, right? Uh, Rudy from Notre Dame is the classic example of that. He earned so much respect, not because he was a great player, but because of his work ethic, because he believed in that. The other thing character is going to help you do is it's going to illuminate the power of consistency in your life. When you do little things well, every single day, every single time, your influence skyrockets over time. It's kind of like uh, what I call the birthday card effect, right? If a friend of yours gets you a birthday card on your birthday, you're like, meh, cool, I got a birthday card. If that same friend gives you just a birthday card for 30 years in a row, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest friend ever, right? It's little things over consistent time that earn influence and respect. And the last thing that character is, is character is integrity in action. Character is not a belief system. Character is not just a mindset. It's integrity in action. You got to live it out. You have to live it out. So, uh, David, when we're talking about building character, right, I think about you and I think about your story. I don't know if y'all know much about David Tyree. Of it. You know, yes, he made a phenomenal catch and won a Super Bowl, but David, your rookie year in the NFL, this is not a topic I think that you probably would have spoken on, right? You got arrested your rookie year, right? Character is not something that, that was high on your radar, but now... You've spent the last decade or so being the mentor, being the leader for the new rookies, for the, for the giants, you know, talking about character. You've completely changed life. So this is, you know, what's encouraging to me is character is definitely something that you can grow. But yes. I mean, talk to me, like what caused that drastic change in you and how did you learn to grow character in your life? Yeah, you know, I think, I think most people are looking to do the right thing. I, I don't think the majority of people in the earth is trying to screw life up. But I think that we're all about the life that we're given. And myself as a young man with all my insecurities and, and opportunities, um, I was kind of the captain of my own ship. And sports was certainly my guiding my guiding light. And uh, obviously, obviously football. And I was that guy, you know, it's amazing we talk about this character or this leadership, how this character influenced leadership. Well, I've always been in high school, our, our teams were exceptional state championship type teams. But we, you know, my senior year, uh, we were the first team in years that didn't even make the playoffs. Um, Syracuse, another great football program at the time down in McNabb. Uh, my senior year, first losing season in 17 years. And I don't think I'm solely responsible, but when I look at my leadership journey and all the flaws from a character perspective, they were imme you know, immensely revealed. And then, you know, that rookie year was really, you know, it was almost like an unraveling because I, you know, I had some hip critic. You know, like I, I was a nice guy when you saw me, but. You know, when the lights was out, I was doing what I, what I wanted to do. And that was to the detriment of myself and others. So I can't, you know, I can't speak to this more that, 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 that arrest, that marijuana possession was, you know, yeah, I'm a young guy in the NFL with, with no direction and vision, but there's no excuses because obviously too much is given, much is required. And um, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a climax moment in my life where I had to make a decision about who I wanted to be. And that's what I did, you know. So it was really my faith in Christ that really, transition me into um you know high standards character integrity and having uh, a a value system that is above my own i think that's what a lot of people lack you know we like to make our own value system but we need something higher to be accountable to that really can govern us and even some of our relationships mm. man i appreciate your vulnerability david i mean you and i we spoke beforehand you're the one who kind of told me yeah, i got arrested i mean this is this I need to talk about this, right? So I appreciate your vulnerability. Yeah. Not everybody wants to get on and talk about their worst days, right? So thank you for that. But, you know, for, for those of y'all listening, right, I want you to see like this, this importance of character. Now, here's the deal. There are multiple primary colors because if you just have character, right, that, that's not going to make you a, the best leader in the world. It's, a fa it's the foundation. It's important. But I don't know if you've ever seen a painting that's only one color. It's, 
it's really hard to make a really good painting with only one color, right? It's hard to tell the differences. You can't even see lines. It's just like one big giant color, right? And that's why there's more primary colors. So I want to move into uh, some of these other primary colors so that you can understand that, yes, you need to know yourself and lead yourself, but there's even more that you're going to have to grow in. So this next uh, color, primary color we're going to talk about is the yellow, right? And before I tell you what it is, I want to do a quick activity. And David, we're, you're going to be involved with this, all right? Um, I'll let you guys type out what you see here. I'm going to do a game called What Do You See? And I want you to type out just first inclination uh, what you see. David, I'll let you tell me, all right? Now, David, I put a picture on the screen. Tell me, what do you see? I see a young lady with a bonnet type of hat on. You see a young lady. Interesting. Okay. Does anybody else see a young lady? Do you see, David, by any chance, a very old lady at all? Uh, let me see. Um, do I see an old girl? What old girl is it? What's all right. I'm going to show you, okay? It's the oh, young and old lady. So, so you now. see the, the, the young lady order. facing away, right? Yeah. But the old lady, you can see here's her nose, right? Mm -hmm. There's her eye and her mouth and her chin. So here's what I love about this. I mean, it's so simple, right? You've probably played this before. or Some of you have probably seen this picture before. But, you know, what's fascinating is each of us come onto a team. When we're working with our peers, we all bring a different perspective. We see things differently. And so the, the second color, this yellow, represents perspective because perspective enables the elite performer to see the bigger picture and to understand not only what they must do to hit the target and accomplish the mission, but they understand why it matters. Why it matters. Most people can move forward and they know what to do, but if you don't know why it matters, it's really hard to find motivation. I've actually seen some people asking questions like, well, how do you move forward when you have a losing season? Or how do you move forward when you're not motivated? Well, it's quite simply, you've got to be able to change your perspective. You've got to be able to see the bigger picture and know why. Why does it even matter to have a winning season, right? You need to know the answers to those questions. And so I want to talk to you about a habitude image really quick. Uh, that's going to help us understand more practically what perspective is and what we mean by this, all right? Now, there's a story that goes along with this one, David. You may re remember it. I think we taught this to, your, to New York Giants when me and Tim came up and visited. But there's a story about this. Uh, I'm going to say a young man since I'm a dude, right? Uh, there's this young man who lived in a small town in Kansas and got a job in the big city, the Big Apple, New York, right? And he moved up to New York City, and the first week on the job, this person didn't have any time other than to go to work and come back, go to work, come back, didn't really get to see the city at all. And so when Friday hit, his first week on the job, this person said, you know what, I want to go see the town. I want to see what it's like. So after work, instead of going left out of the building like he normally would, which would take him home, he decided to go right and just go on an adventure. And as he walked through New York City, he took in all the sights, the sounds, the smells, and was just blown away by everything that he saw. And while this person was walking, they, they went down a, another block, a place they had never been. They saw this giant construction site. And, you know, curiosity just hit them. They're like, man, I got to go find out what that is. So the gentleman walks up to somebody who's working, and this person was laying bricks, right? And he asks him, excuse me, sir, I don't mean to bother you, but what is it you're doing here? The person working didn't even turn around. They just says, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm laying bricks. Now, that's true, but it's not the answer that the man wanted. So he said, all right, well, I'll just go ask somebody else. He goes to the next person who was also laying bricks at the time and said, excuse me, sir, what is it you're doing here? This person at least had the decency to stop their work and turn around. But the person said with a smart eloquent remark, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm getting a paycheck which also was true, but not what the man was looking for. Now, the man started realizing he was bothering all the workers and got a little self-conscious, but he was just too curious. So he had to go ask one more person. So he went to the last person, the brick mason, who was laying bricks and said, excuse me, sir, I don't mean to bother you, but I just got to know, what is it you're doing here? The last person that he asked stopped everything that he was doing, turned around and had a huge smile on his face and said, you don't know what we're doing here? 
I'm building a cathedral. Yes, sir. We're gonna we're gonna do homeless uh, food shelter, food drives. People are gonna come and find peace here. People who are struggling are, are gonna be able to come and find hope. We're gonna have weddings so people can start their uh, families here. Yes, sir. I. I am building a cathedral. Now, here's what's fascinating about that, David. And, um, you know, you and I have talked about this before, but, you know, all three people were telling the truth. But only the last guy, the last brick mason, saw the bigger picture. So here's, here's the lesson that we want you to get from this, everybody listening. Most people, average athletes, they only see the paycheck or the task in front of them. But elite performers, elite leaders, they see the big picture. They aren't playing football because they want to get a big check. They're not playing, they're not jumping into the pool every day because they want to win just an Olympic gold medal. No, they see something bigger. They're building a cathedral. They want to use their lives to add value to others. You see, perspective is going to help you do a couple of things. When you can see the big picture, it's going to help you communicate clarity to the rest of your team. When your team's not motivated, you can provide clarity and motivation for them because you can say, hey, yeah, we're losing right now, but look where we're going, right? Perspective is going to provide purpose, not just for you, but for those around you. The perspective is going to ignite hope into those around you. In the perspective, when people have hope, they have motivation, they know why it prompts action. So David, I want to stop for a second, right? For you, something shifted in your career, right? From 2006 to 2007, when you had that Super Bowl season, right? You were already a pro bowler, right, by that time, but uh, for special teams, but now you became this celebrity, you know, wide receiver. I mean, what shifted in your perspective? What, what changed for you? Yeah, the, the unique story even with that season for me that was kind of behind the scenes was, you know, obviously I came into the to the NFL and honestly I only had this great opportunity to play in the NFL because somewhere along the line of college I had to decide, you know, you know things weren't working out like I planned a wide receiver and I had to decide, man, I wasn't content with being on the, on the bench. So the special teams was an avenue for me to, to make a play. And I was a football player. I had the mindset of a football player. So for all the athletes, I had to make a decision was whether, you know, what's more important to contribute or to do, you know, to, to do what I, you know, feel like I came here to do. And that's, that's how I became a good special teams player. And obviously that, that trans, translated to all pro and et cetera, et cetera. But of course, I have natural ambitions to excel at the wide receiver position. Now, I, 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 I'm certain in my mind that I can do it at this level. I knew that there were people who were more skilled and more talented than me, but I had the grit. So, um, you know, I always positioned myself to be that in competition for the third wide receiver position, which, you know, still gives me a chance to contribute on special teams to come in and have a significant role. So my third year, I won it. Things didn't really uh, work out well, a little bit of the politics. Fourth year, I didn't win it, but, I, you know, I was able to contribute and come in. I always had the respect of my peers. So that was really frustrating, man. So I think what changed me going into my fifth year is that I think the the – the team knew they had somebody that they can trust, and I was good at what I was good at. They'd rather have somebody else do that, but I'm still trying to go do my thing. And I, but I just say, you know what? This is a year I'm not going to be frustrated with the results. I'm going to find this contentment, and um, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the goal. The goal is always going to be the goal. But you know what? I'm going to keep my peace. And things really didn't work out well. I had an injury in, in training camp, missed the first two games. I didn't have any any great statistics. I was able to come in and do some spot, um, you know, some spot uh, cleanup stuff in the Chicago game, made some plays on the playoff run. But it was meager statistics. But um, amazingly, in that same season, obviously, uh, Jeremy Shockey gets hurt down, and, and I end up, go, you know, being a part of the equation in this playoff run, which obviously led to a, to a Super Bowl. So it was really a shift in perspective about being content and um, understanding my role was valuable, and I wasn't going to allow it to frustrate me or kind of uh, take my peace away. So it was a it was a major moment of of um, I guess you could say of maturity in that respect, where I could have the right attitude, approach, and still and still be uh, you know valuable to the team, and not feel like I was slighted. 
Mm, yeah, well, I appreciate you seeing that. Just that I love how you're saying it was it was a shift in mindset for you, right? It, w- it was a total change in mindset that allowed you to to kind of move forward and not let anything steal your peace. What a powerful statement, right? Um, and sometimes that's as simple as perspective is, is, is going back and saying, hey, I'm, I'm just going to answer my why. I'm, I'm going to focus on my why, right? And not let anybody steal my peace. So, well, I want to keep moving because we're running out of time here and I want to get through these last two primary sure. colors. So the, we've talked about character, right? If, you're char- if you have character, you have perspective, that's great. And, and I will also say these are, what's cool about leadership, right, is leadership is something that can be developed right? It's not like IQ, you're just born with it or you're not. Now, some people I will say are born with a head start, right? This way they're wired, but these are attributes you can develop yourself, which is why we want to talk to you about them, right? Um, In this last or or this second to last, the red uh, is probably one of the hardest to develop because it's so scary too. And, And the red stands for courage. Even though it's hard to develop, you can develop it, right? And so the summary of courage really is that courage is going to enable you as a leader to initiate and to take the risk to step out, to go toward a goal, right? Um, Winston Churchill, who was one of the most courageous leaders of all time, said courage is the first of all human qualities. He valued courage more than anything. You just got to attack the mission and do what you think is right. And so the habitude image I want to talk to you about to help you kind of understand this a little bit more, this idea of courage is really, a, it's going to help you kind of determine your mind uh, set when you face adversity, right? Uh, I don't know if at your birthday, David, your family gives you, you know, birthday candles or anything. I know my family will, will kind of do a birthday candle and I blow it out and that candle's really easy to blow out. Um, but what's fascinating with a birthday candle, right, is, is it takes very little to just get rid of the flame. Well, while a brush fire, right, you know, that we've seen tons of brush fires in, in California, et cetera, wind actually ignites the fire even more. And so the, the image that we think about when we're thinking about being courageous is, are you, are you a candle or are you a brush fire? Are you going to be a candle and just let people blow you out when, when you face adversity? Or are you going to be a brush fire and use it as fuel to grow stronger? You see, the same amount of wind that extinguishes a candle is the same amount of wind that inflames a brush fire. And elite competitors are like brush fires. They use the obstacles. They use the hardships in life to help them flourish rather than flounder. Now, this is a lot easier said than done. And Major Morales really hit, hit on this earlier. He said, leadership's easy to talk about. But I think his exact words were, um, let's see here. Yeah, yeah, action is louder than words, right? Words mean nothing. It's all about action. Encourage. Courage is a couple of things, right? It's not just words. Courage is contagious, first of all. When you step out and act and chase something you're convicted about, something you want, it encourages the person next to you to do the same thing. Courage is relentless. It doesn't give up because it faces adversity, right? I think of your story, David, and you know you weren't the, the starting wide receiver right away, right? You, you were relentless, right? And right. now I would say you're the most famous wide receiver I think of that entire Super Bowl team. Like, I can't name one other guy that was a wide receiver then, right? Now, yeah. I know you can follow them, but I'm just saying, it's just interesting to me, right? You didn't know that was going to happen. Um, no, 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 no. Right? Uh, then w- the next thing courage is, is courage is inspiring, right? It, it just, it, it uplifts others. And lastly, courage is conviction in action. If you are convicted about something, you need to act on it, right? Go after it. Um, and this is going to come back to you have a healthy sense of core values, right? Um, you have a healthy sense of identity and emotional security. You're going to be able to follow those convictions. That's why you got to have character. you got to have a good, strong perspective so that you can be wise in your courage, right? People who don't have character and aren't seeing things clearly and have a poor perspective, their courage can be looked at, at as foolishness, right? Um, and so it is important. You, you develop the, the character and the perspective. So David, you know, before your professional career, you had some things that happened to you in college. 
that many people would have looked at as maybe a, a reason to, to say, oh, I can't do this or et cetera. I mean, talk to us a little bit about that. Um, what happened to you in college that changed your course? Yeah, sorry about the alarm in the back crew. I got seven kids here, so you can't overcome every noise. But uh, <laughs> and, I, yeah, if all my chat boxes, I, yeah, I got I got broke spoke alarms. Y'all, y'all gotta chill out. <laughs> so, so here we go, guys. I mean, like just to, just to wrap this up quickly. Of course, like I said, I, I had my my fair share of character flaws, and of course, um, you know, I, I would say the biggest thing I had to really overcome and take some personal courage was actually having a child in college. You know, um, you know, you know. Obviously, many of you are aspiring athletes looking to play at the collegiate level. Um, no one, you know, none of us are planning for that. So, uh, 21 years old, I have my first son. So, um, you know, I, I mean, number one is devastating mentally. You have to really kind of make decisions about what you're going to do really moving forward. And you didn't, you, when, you're, when there's a lack of preparation, there's always some anxiety about it. So, you know, it, it took that was my courageous moment, but. Um, and I would even say even more so my wife, thank God we're, we're, we're together. Um, you know, and at the time it just wasn't that simple as, as you can imagine. So, mm -hmm. you know, we were able to, you know, bring my oldest son to, he's 18, he's graduating this year today into the world. But at the same time, every time I, you know, I, my dream was to play division one, a college football, I chose to go to Syracuse. I was actually living out my dream at the moment, but it, you know, having a son, it actually really created a greater hunger and a desire to, you know, to really expand my vision, expand those dreams. And so for the first time, I really say, you know what, I need, I, I need to, I need to go get this. And so, you know, it, it kind of stimulated and gave me a new, a new fire in my heart. So every time I went to the line of scrimmage, I would have this image of my son in my head. So I think, you know, it becomes really powerful when you begin to live for someone other than yourself. You begin to aspire to do something significant for someone other than yourself because you, you have a greater motivation and a greater sense of accountability that gives you the courage that you need to be successful. Yeah, I think what I hear you saying, David, really is, is you, you learned really quickly what convicted you the most, right? Which was, uh, you know, being a father, right? And absolutely. I would say for all of you listening, if you want to develop your courage, right, define what convicts you. You can do that by asking yourself three questions. I'll, I'll give them to you really quick. I didn't come up with these. A guy smarter than me did. Um, what, what makes you happy? What breaks your heart? And what makes you angry? If you can answer those three things, you're going to know what your convictions are. Now, those three questions are not easy to answer. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now. You're going to need to find a alone place to really think about it. But if you answer those three questions, what makes you happy? What breaks your heart? And what makes you angry? You're going to be able to discover kind of where your convictions are so you can start living out your convictions a little more. So we've got one more of these primary colors and I hope to leave some room for Q&A. So let me just dive into this. The last color, you can be the most character polished person, right? With a good head on your shoulders. You can see the world different. You can, you can have courage. But if you just have those three things and nothing else, I mean, you're, in, you're not really making a, a huge difference on others because you're lacking favor with your teammates, right? Part of being a team is that it's not about your ego, it's about the we go, right? Uh, how can you develop your mentality from an ego that it's all about you to a we go if you're, you're empowering your team? So favor, in, in a nutshell, right, in summary, is favor enables the leader to attract and empower others to join, uh, join them in the cause. So the image I'll share with you really quickly, and we'll go through this pretty, pretty fast, is uh, this idea of a bridge, not a wall. Now, when you walk up to a giant chasm like this, I don't know about you, David, but for me, I'm like, whoa, I don't want to fall down that thing, right? So the first thing I think is somebody should build a fence here. Um, I'm not thinking I want to build a bridge, right? I don't know how to build a bridge. It's complicated. People got to go to school for a long time to build a bridge. I, I know how to build a fence. It's pretty simple. You just throw up some wood and put it, it'd be a little hard, but, but I could do it. You mm -hmm. see, people, in life, when we walk in and we experience people who are different than us, our natural tendency is we want to build a wall. We're scared of them. But elite competitors understand, I don't need to build a wall. I need to build a bridge. I need to build a bridge and get to know this person. That's how you develop favor, right? Each of us encounters new and different people through life. Sometimes you'll be with teammates you love. Sometimes you'll be with teammates you don't like. 
Our natural instinct is to see differences and put up a wall, and we're prone to distrust, but we must consciously build bridges that can bear the weight of honest disclosure. You see, favor is going to help you do a couple of things. One, favor is going to help you find a way, find a way to build a relationship, find a way to, to find a connection with somebody who's different than you. Favor also doesn't call teammates out. Favor calls teammates up, right? There's a difference. Calling somebody out is telling them everything you hate about them, right? Calling somebody up is telling them the potential you see inside of them, right? So it, it's, it's the difference of telling somebody, you're lazy, why are you not touching the line, to saying, man, if you touch the line, you're going to get 10 times better because it's that one extra step. And I know you can do it. That's the difference of calling out versus calling up, right? Next is, is favor shines the light on others. It's about when somebody gives you the glory, you shine it on somebody else. You see every single piece of praise as an opportunity to encourage somebody else. And if you want to know if your teammates need encouragement, just check if they're breathing, right? Everyone needs encouragement. Hop on a stink. Give, give a teammate a text right now. You may not be around them. Shoot them a text. Just be like, hey, man, thinking about you. Hey, I'm doing a workout. You want to join me tomorrow? Be an inviter. And ultimately, favor is humility in action. If you want to develop favor, I'll give you some really practical steps. Begin with belief in others. Quit assuming everybody's out to get you, right? Learn to be a host in the relationship and not the guest. Be the person who adds value, who cares, who asks a question, who reaches out and quit waiting for your coach or another teammate to come along and tell you how great you are, right? Um, determine your, to be others-centered. Focus on their needs, not your needs. A great quote on humility is, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's just thinking of yourself less. Think of others. Think about how, to, how you can encourage them them, how you can motivate them, how you can invite them into things, instead of just constantly worry, being worried about, well, are they thinking about me? Do they like me? Do they want me? It doesn't matter if they do. Just be you and invite them on, on the road that you're on. Um, so David, you know, favor is one of your favorite topics, right? Um, we've spoken about this before. I'm curious, you know, who is somebody, you know, you've worked with a lot of great people. You've been around a lot. Who's somebody that you know that you would say has just really established favor well? Uh, by, by, by far and large, you know, um, I would say Troy, Troy Vincent is, is, my goodness, he's the head of football operations in the National Football League. Um, I, Troy was our NFL PA president when I was a player. Um he, he was, you know, he could have he could have been a guy leading the union, but uh, ended up at the National Football League. And his career on the field and his career off the field have been exemplary. And really, just as a leader, has demonstrated um, exactly what we all, you know, aspire to: serving leadership. And I had a great opportunity when I wrote my book, More Than Just a Catch, to include his story, his kind of faith journey into that book, and you know, and, and just some stories about his life that I felt could be impactful. And that, that has been a bridge of favor into my life that has kind of um, continued to allow me to grow and mature and be in the same position to serve others as well. So I couldn't say more. You know, the favor is very much tied to humility and the consideration of others. And uh, that's what every single one of us are going to have to do if we aspire to be uh, significant influencers. And I love your definition. It's about influence. So um, continue to be great. Yeah. Thank you, David. Well, here's, here's kind of an, in a nutshell, guys, what we talked about today. And I want to talk, tell you, this is, this is the pathway to influence. If you're the, the bottom woman or man on the totem pole, you're the freshman, you just got into the team, nobody even likes you, right? If you focus on developing your character, if you focus on your self-identity, emotional security, your self you build those things, right? And you also are working on your perspective to say, hey, I see the bigger picture. I know what's going on. And you develop the courage to live those convictions out no matter what your peers say. Eventually, over time, you will develop favor. It's not going to happen practice number one. It may not even happen at practice number 12, right? But over time, you will develop favor if you are a man or woman of character 
who sees the bigger picture and has a perspective and lives out their convictions with courage. So I want to close with this. Um, many of you out there, right, you're, you're all athletes or coaches, right? You exist to perform. You thrive in competition. You're motivated by your peers. You take glory in the roar of the crowd, right? But I want to tell you, your competitive advantage, especially during COVID-19, may not be getting better at a particular skill in your competition because you're not just a player. In fact, you are a person before you are a player. And I want to challenge you during this season, go all out on figuring out who you are. Invest in who you are. Answer those questions. What makes me happy? What breaks my heart? What causes me to be angry? Learn about your convictions. Learn what your core values are, right? And if you focus on building who you are, it will drastically affect what you do in competition, 100%. Quit trying to be like somebody else and paint your life's masterpiece. But you got to know who you are. you got to know who you are. And so uh, to help you with that, there's a couple of resources I want to tell you about. Um, in fact, uh, there's, a, there's a book called The Habitudes for Self-Leadership. And it is all about helping you discover who you are. Uh, we've got a promo code, save10. You can go to thegrowingleaders.com slash store to get that. And then also David's book, More Than Just the Catch, right? I would encourage you, check this out, right? Um, get these resources uh, if you're financially able. Um, I think the book's $12, right? It's, it's not that much. And I would encourage you guys just to, Start wrestling with this uh, right now. Dive deeper and, and discover who you are. So I'm going to put uh, a couple of tools in the chat box here really quick. I'm going to copy and paste that and send it out. I just sent a couple of links. One, if you're a coach, uh, Growing Leaders, we put out powerful articles for free all the time. We just put one out today. Um, how do you invest your time as a coach in today's new normal? Uh, I put a link to the Habitudes for self Leader book for anyone who wants to buy that and a promo code so you can save 10% and then also a link for David Tyree's book more than just a catch uh, you guys got to hear this guy's story I wish we could dive deeper and go longer but we're out of time so buy that on Amazon thank you all so much for your time today Aaron David also love love speaking with you man thank you for your time so of course, appreciate you guys. It. yeah hey guys thank you thank you so much for doing this the uh, yeah, we've uh, one of the things we look at is just participation in attendees, and if that if that stays up, and it did throughout this, I really really appreciate it. Do you guys mind if we spend five six minutes on just a couple of questions? I got five minutes, David. You've got the one with seven kids, so it's <laughs> <laughs> I got five minutes. Yep, no 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 pressure at all. I just saw a couple of good ones. No, no, I, I totally understand. Would love to touch on. Um, Especially in these in these uncertain times, how can someone stay motivated to provide for and, and lead your team? It's important for leaders to be for their teams. How can we make sure we always are? Uh, you know, I, like I said, it, it, none of us can act like the. I was I was just you know lead in with this. None of us can act like life hasn't changed. But I think the mission and objective has not changed. And, you know, and I think we've already seen tremendous examples, including this lecture right here, of how the mission hasn't changed. And, and some of us have more resources than others. But when you have that mission, that purpose and that goal to begin with, then we know it's, it's a non-negotiable. So you're, you're, you, you, we, 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 we find the will, the desire, the resolve to actually get that done. And I think you know, there's certain things that from the public, you know, interfacing with people, there are limitations there, but the motive, right? So it's a phone call. It's the Zoom call. It's the, it's every particular resource that are going to allow us to, to be in position to serve the people that we're committed to. It's hmm. my quick thought. Yeah, I, I think you hit that well, David. I think really right now um, it, it is just kind of focusing on, on learning your why, you know, there's, uh, really focus in slowing down to invest in yourself, get to know yourself, and by doing a lot of self reflection and and uh, developing those fundamentals, these these primary 
simpler so that when you get back into that interaction, you're going to be a, you're going to have that competitive advantage because you're so much more mature. Right. So. Awesome. This question is kind of long, but I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the, the sophomore class at my high school has a weak work ethic. So the football coaches are looking for myself and a few other players to talk. However, when I talk, it seems as if the words are just noises. Moreover, over the past few weeks, we've been conducting online workouts and they don't show up or they come up with some ridiculous excuse. Any recommendations? I'll, I'll take a stab at that first, David, and I'll let you, you probably have a better answer than me. But, um, you know, we have a, a, a leadership principle, a habitude, we call Dorothy's Way. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Wizard of Oz, right? But there's three major characters in that movie, a lot more, but three that we can learn a leadership lesson from. You know, you have the wicked witch, right, who tries to earn influence through, in, through uh, intimidation, right, by just being flat out mean. Um, I don't think that's a wise way to go. You have uh, the wizard who tries to gain influence through manipulation, right? He acts like he's more powerful than he actually is. And then you have Dorothy. Dorothy wins influence and gains buy-in, not by telling everybody what they should do, but by simply saying, hey, I'm trying to figure things out too. Why don't we go together? Why don't you join me? Why don't you come with me and we'll follow this path and see where it leads? You're trying to get a heart. You're trying to get you know, um, a, a brain. Why don't you just come with me? And I would just encourage you, don't try to act like you have all the answers because you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. Uh, and just say, hey, you know what? I desire, this is what I desire. What do you desire? Hey, wh why don't we just try to get what we desire together and let's help each other? I think by inviting rather than pushing, you're going to get a lot further. David, what do you think? I could, I mean, I could, I could not really put anything um, to that degree. For the, for, the, for the coaches and leaders, what I would say is that, you know, this, this is the, the value conversation. When you have a standard, when we have a standard in place, and that is, you know, because I'm a standard man, and once someone does not meet the standard, then it, it then it potentially removes them from the op opportunity to, to participate, and that's that's kind of a culture thing, right? So, you know, when you set a particular standard in your in within your culture, um, you're either a fit or you're not a fit, and we either are going to be willing to live with the consequences of maybe a smaller team. Um, you know, because it's a pedigree. So I think that's something that, you know, the, the leadership internally and, of course, you know, from the player's perspective, you always have to consider. But uh, on through to the coaches. So, you know what, maybe, you know, your coach, maybe your team, well, you were scheduled to have 43 players. You know what, now because there's so many unwilling people, maybe you're only going to go to war with 23. I'm just kind of pointing a worst-case scenario in light of having standards that you're unwilling to compromise for. And I think that's the way you begin to uh, shape a culture in regard to what your expectations are from the people that you serve. All right, awesome. We'll hit uh, one more here, um, given, the, given the time that we're in, um, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. What's the best advice, and if we can hear from both of you again, that'd be great. What's the best advice that can be given to those who lost all hope when sports were stopped? Ooh, woo. You know, it, it goes back to the character piece, right? This is the identity. And I, and I think for most athletes, we find so much fulfill, fulfillment in, in what we do versus who we are. And this is the... The, the, the parallel that can be extremely dangerous depending on what sport, how good we are. And obviously I work with elite athletes. So this is, this is what I'm working with to some degree almost every day, if you really want to be honest. So for me, because, you know, it wasn't until I, you know, I really became a Christian where I'd had a different identity shift because, you know, football is like a surrogate father. It gives you, you know, it gives you purpose. It gives you, you know, it gives you promise. It gives you praise. It gives you all the things that we should be getting from a, a healthier structure prior to we're so focused on what we do and the moment you're removed from that sport. So I think it really goes back to the who are you? This is a, an amazing time. You know, this, this, this quarantine opportunity is amazing time to dig deeper internally, as JT was talking about. And really, hey, this can't be ignored. You're either going to deal with it now or you're going to deal with it later. And, I, and, I, and I've experienced it. Even having that as a young man, when the, when the game is gone, 
you have to figure out who you are, what you're good at, what you like, and, and what your purpose is. And so this is a big, big conversation. And I think if you can begin to ask yourself these questions now and begin to attack them, you're going to prepare yourself for longevity. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you, Dave. I think you said it so well. And I would just say, you know, um, that's, a, that's a big question. So I would say you need a perspective change, right? And, and in order to have a perspective change, you got to go back to the fundamentals of developing your character and your identity and your emotional security, right? Because it's totally normal. There are so many athletes. I talk to them all the time who have their identity wrapped up in their sport. So I would just encourage you, check out these resources. Uh, you know, Habitudes for Self-Leadership will just really take you through 13 different exercises for you to, to learn about yourself. And I would encourage you to read David's book and, and hear how he established his identity, right? Um, that book, will, he shares some really raw stuff in there. And so that, that's what I'd recommend is make it learn, right? Yeah. So, but hey, can I also just say thank you to the Marines for helping sponsor this? Thank, and you, thank you so much. You, thank you, Morales. Like, I mean, you said it so well, man. We're, we're talking leadership right now, but man, these guys in the Marines, they live it every day, life or death situation. So thank you to, to them. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, guys, yeah, really, really appreciate it. Uh, David, JT, again, thank you so much. On behalf of Glazier, uh, on behalf of the, the, the athletes and coaches that we have, all three or 4,000 or whatever we had today, uh, really just, just an, awesome, an awesome event this morning, and I'm, I'm really pumped. Just so everybody knows, we're doing something similar. JT, you'll be with us. We'll have Timothy Alexander as well next week. Uh, another leadership topic, but we're going to focus more in on the captain's aspect. So we're, we're kind of pushing that for uh, if, you're, if you're a captain of your team, if you want to be a captain of your team, or if, if maybe that's something that's coming up for you, we absolutely encourage you to join that and go to glazierclinics.com. Right at the top of the page there, you'll see a link to, to sign up. Um, guys, again, thank you so, so much. Thank you, Aaron. Hey, you guys have a great Bye. rest of the day. Bye. Thanks, Ty Ruby. Love you, man.